welcome to another edition of What's the 411 in studio. We have Miss Chrissy Monroe, reality star, formerly of Love and Hip Hop New York, and now on Comeback Kings. Hi. <laughs> Hola. <laughs> que paso. In this interview, we'll be discussing with Chrissy um, life after reality TV and all the good stuff that she has going on. So let's get started, Chrissy. All right, so. First things first, how did you land your role on Love & Hip Hop New York? <laughs> okay, a lot of people ask me that question. Um, actually, um, well, my best friend is DJ Khaled's fiance. She has a good friend, Tanisha, that was um, affiliated with someone that worked on the Atlanta cast. And, you know, I called her up. I said, you know, I really think I'm a good fit for Love & Hip Hop. Um, I just don't know anybody. She said, Tanisha. And I had met her once or twice, so... Um, she gave me her number, and I spoke to Tanisha. She said, send me your bio and a little bit about you. And um, two days later, I had an interview with Mona, and uh, the rest is history. I went in there with my dog and my blonde ponytail and all my <laughs> diamonds blinged out and just had them laughing, crying, and all that in three hours. And, you know, the rest is history. I've been on Love and Hip Hop since. That's great. <laughs> so, it was that simple. Yeah. For I, me, I, I, and not yeah, for everyone. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people wish that they could just walk into an interview and just, you know, nail it just like that, you know, let alone even have the resources. But it's all about who you know. Yeah, the that goes to prove it is. I say that all the time. It really is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do you feel that your character, well, the person, your person that you are, your personality was edited or manipulated to portray you in a certain way? Mm. Well, yes and no. Not really. Um... You know, a lot of facts about my, my life came out and things like that, which there's no shame in my game. Um, the fact that I was dealing with a married man. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, I, I don't think it was manipulated. I mean, the editors are going to edit what they want. I right. think some things were maybe exaggerated. Um, but, no, I think it was a pretty true uh, portrayal of my life last year at that time when I was going through the relationship with Chink, um, you know, he was a married man and right. I, I knew that he was married when I met him. He told me he was not with his wife. I chose to deal with him in spite of that. Um, and I gave him, well, maybe, well, well, we were together a year before the show. I gave him two years of my life and it was an accurate portrayal of what a lot of women go through when they meet someone um, that is already in a situation and, you know, they keep making those promises of I'm gonna leave, but then, you know, the excuses come in. It's the kids, it's the house, cheaper to keep her. Um, so many women still come up to me to this day and thank me for having the strength to walk away from that situation. So, um, no, it wasn't manipulated. Um, and, and as far as who I am now, I was just me. I'm the same person that you're sitting here with right now, Courtney, is the same person that you got on the show. Now, do you feel like the, the uh, show had an impact or negative or positive impact on your former relationship with uh, Jinx? Well, he and I no longer speak. Right. I mean, that would have been with with or without the cameras. Right. Without with or without love and hip hop. Um It's been a positive impact on my life because, you know, right. I'm getting way more action. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm getting a whole another level of action. Yes. Men are groupies too. Believe that. But um, you know, no, I mean he and I fell out. We would have fell out on or off camera and that's just what it was. So do you still keep in contact with any of your former castmates? Oh, yeah, all the time. Johnny Blaze and I just spoke the other day. Uh, Sin Santana, um, Precious Parish, she's down in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. I ran into Cisco a few weeks ago at a function. Yeah, everybody's cool. I ran into Rich uh, during Fashion Week. So, yeah, everybody's cool. Which Rich? Uh, Rich Dollars. Dollars. Richie Dollars. D! Yeah, now he's <laughs> on the, uh, the cast of um, Love and Hip Hop uh, Hollywood. He is an international yeah. gigolo playboy, what you want to call it. <laughs> He gets around. <laughs> now, do you ever think that you'll return to reality TV? Um, I, I can't even say that. If, if I w were given the right opportunity and I felt like it was the right fit, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but some people, you know, they get a taste of it and they just fall in love with it and become addicted, you know. And then other people, you know, they break away and they, they, you know, go on to have very successful careers in something else. So, you know, it's just interesting to, you know. No, it was a lot of fun. I have nothing bad to say about my experience. It was actually really fun. I mean, I met a lot of new... New people, I learned a lot from Mona and, you know, the executive producers. Um, yeah, if it was the right if right situation, I think I would need something more tailored around me and my life instead of me interacting with the male species. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you feel about reality TV as a whole? I love it. You love it? I love it. Um, you know, like I say, it was definitely a, a stepping stone in my life because it gave me the ability to promote a lot of the charities that I'm involved with and such and business ventures. 
um, I love it. It, it. It's all what you do with it, and you know, it's it's what you want to tune into. Like, you're not going to watch me home watching Duck Dynasty. Right. I have mm. no interest. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, but it all, you know, it, it depends on what appeals to you. Now, what advice would you give someone that would want to enter into becoming a reality star and breaking into reality TV and things of that nature? Just know what you're getting into. Know that um, you have to be in control of your emotions, and you know, you have to guard your what you want to be personal and private as right. best as you can because, you know, as much as you try, they may still be able to get around people that may reveal things about you that you may not know, that people that you trust that they may turn against you, things like that. So right. just really know what you're getting yourself involved in and the depths that they'll go to expose certain things to get those ratings. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's all about the ratings. So now what are you currently working on? You mentioned charities and things of that nature. Yes, well, I work with a, a lot of pet charities in the New York area. One is Celebrity Catwalk major um, we raise a lot of money for homeless pets pets and shelters um, finding you know vaccinations money for homes fostering spay and neutering um, you know medical treatment stuff like that just basic stuff even blankets and stuff um, <clears throat> and also Yorkie 911 rescue That's so, so cute. yeah <laughs> so cute the little baby nuggets oh they're so cute so it's a small dog rescue but they're a really good organization and every single dollar goes to help the pets so, you know, I prefer to work with more grassroots, smaller organizations where you know where the money is being allotted to instead of a lot of the larger charities where they're giving their president of the, <clears throat> I don't want to say any names, <laughs> $500,000 a year and it's supposed to be a charity. So I know I like to just lend my celebrity and my time to help people that are smaller and they're making a difference daily in their communities with these pets. So that's one thing um, I'm working on. UPN 9, My 9, with uh, a wonderful cast, Ed yes. Lover, Jermaine Hopkins. You may know him from Juice. He's been on The Martin Show, was Lean On Me. Major, major dude. Um, all A-list celebrities that he's worked with. Um, we have Tretch from Naughty By Nature. Wonderful cast of people. I'm the first female uh, casted to the show. Yes. So that's an honor. Nice. Yes, so uh, that's going well. We're getting great ratings. <clears throat> the show has been a hit. We actually have the the writer from the Martin Lawrence show is our writer, so it's a scripted comedy uh, show. So I'm I'm loving life. I'm gonna let everyone know where they can tune in to mm -hmm. uh, Comeback Kings. Yes, uh, UPN nine my nine on Saturday nights. That's at twelve thirty. We may be actually moving up to a, a earlier time slot soon, so watch out for that. And another venture I'm working on, yes. the Pretty Girl Gang Cosmetics. Yes, she is. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. I'm the, the, the spokes model and face of the brand. Yes, she is. <laughs> Get my model on. <laughs> yeah, so um, wonderful products. Uh, we have lashes, lip, lip glosses, lip liners, mink, sable lashes. Luxury, darling. When you can't afford the cold, you can have the lashes. Yes. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you got to let viewers know where they can find you on social media because you have this whole Chrissy Monroe world, ChrissyMonroe.com. And it's growing every day. Okay, yes. so you can find me on the gram where I live. That's my second home. Thank yes. God. Whoever created Instagram, I love you. Marry me now. At Chrissy Monroe, C-H-R-I-S-S-Y-M-O-N-R-O-E. On Twitter, where I'm verified, Mama, I made it. Um, Chris, Chrissy Monroe underscore Facebook Chrissy Monroe. I have two Facebooks because I ran out of space. And then um, my website is www.chrissymonroe.com. And where are you originally from, Chrissy? Baltimore, small Baltimore, Baltimore, Maryland. Born and raised. And when did you uh, first come to New York? About 13 years ago. Really? But I still have the accent, somewhat. A little bit, a little bit, a little accent, but you sound like a true New Yorker. You think? I no, think you so. sound like a true New Yorker. <laughs> New Yorker. <laughs> Some words, yes. but not all words. So that's great. You know, you have a lot of really good, interesting things going on, and we're excited for you for Comeback Kings. And, you know, it's it's really great that you were able to make a transition um, from reality TV into, you know, like a, a mainstream um, television show where you have an audience and you know it's scripted and, and things like of that nature you know do you feel that um, it's easier to go into a situation where there's actually a script as opposed to reality television no doubt yeah absolutely you're not freestyling it like that's the difference between somebody singing a song that's already written and you can rehearse it or you know you know what you're gonna be singing then to come in and say okay make up a song right and you don't know what's going to come out of your mouth and you're going to say something stupid or, you know, um, absolutely. Because I know, okay, let me look at this script and mm, that's kind of crazy. But, you know, it's it's acting. 
Right. The other stuff is like, the people that are watching is like, this is her. She said that. Oh, she's right. a horrible person. And you may not even meant it to come out that way, or they may not even edit to come out that way. And then it's like they want to nail you to the cross because you may have said something in a situation that you didn't even know what you were walking into that day and reacted a certain way. And it's stressful. Now, do you feel that, because a lot of uh, uh, people feel that reality TV is somewhat scripted, that there is um, a format, that it is, you know, um, some kind of, you know, setup where you kind of know before you go into a situation that it's going to ha actually happen, or do you feel that that's like a, um, you know, that's something that's false and like a misconception of reality TV? I mean, you know, the producers don't totally leave you in the dark. Right. But, you know, you kind of get hints of what may be happening that day. Um, of course, they can't tell you, but... I mean, a lot of things are exaggerated. I don't want to say manipulated, right. but exaggerated. Um, you can always walk out at any time. Right. And then, you know, of course, you know, you're in touch with your producer like every day, every other day, and you're telling them what's going on in your life. So they're going off of what you feed them. So they can only kind of use what you feed them. Right. So what does that tell you? Don't tell them too much. Don't tell them too so much. You don't want to know. <laughs> yes. you know. Oh, you can tell them what you do want to know, and they can maybe like, you know, make something cool happen. Right. Now, what do you feel was like your most uncomfortable moment on reality television? Hmm. Probably meeting my ex-boyfriend's father who was terminally ill. Right. That was very uncomfortable. Knowing that I was going to be compared to his wife. Right. That they were so used to for over 20 years. That was just very uncomfortable for me. Um, just to be putting, put myself, you know, in that position. But he wanted me to meet his father in case his father did pass away. Absolutely. But then I didn't want to be selfish and be like, no, you know, it was just a tough decision because, you know, his father was very weak and um, I felt kind of uncomfortable because I'm just kind of like the new chick and you guys know the wife and the children all these years and I felt kind of like the harlot coming into the house. <laughs> you know what I, mean? like, I understand. Yeah. I totally understand. Now, what's it, I want you to tell everyone, what is the biggest misconception that people may think or feel about you? Because uh, you are a darling. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I don't really take time to even care to think what they think about me. You know, what is the saying? Those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind. Like, the people that criticize me or, you know, have misconceptions about me, I, nine times out of ten, will never meet in life anyway. So, right. you know, they can try to slay me on social media. Everyone from the show gets it 24-7. Right. Um, I never took time to really even care what they think because I'm just keeping it moving and progressing in my life and staying positive and working on me where they're going to talk anyway. I could be Mother Teresa. They're going to talk. Right. Now, do you respond to any of any uh, your your uh, audience, like your fans or, you know, the haters or the fans on any forms of social media? I do if it's positive. Not all the time. When I have time, I'm not a snob or anything like that. I'm Like I said, I'm me on and off camera. But um, I have had to check a bitch <laughs> occasionally. Sorry, I'm not allowed to pray. I'm going to have to bleep that out. Bleep. No, bleep. it's okay. No, you're fine. <laughs> um, you know, in the beginning, yeah, when it was all new to me, I really was overwhelmed with the Absolutely. amount of hatred and just negativity like get a life like can't you go out and make a dollar like do something with your day then sit and try to pick me apart on social media right. talking about my eyebrows not being on fleek <laughs> are you serious <laughs> nobody got time for that <laughs> you're like i have a show that i have to film yeah like girl bye oh, like you have hair and makeup oh that. and then <laughs> you know you had a pimple on your forehead and it didn't look good and you should have never said this and you know, your shirt didn't match your pants. <laughs> this is high school. Leave me alone. Stop <laughs> bullying me. Leave me alone. I don't care. <laughs> Block. Um, but then, you know, sometimes you have to consider the source. You look at their, their photo, and it's like, whoa, this person is saying this about me. You got you better look in the mirror, honey. Right. And, and do a reality check because right. you wouldn't last a day in my shoes. <laughs> right. So just, you know, I learned how to block and delete. Yeah, and you know what? It comes to the territory of being, you know, in entertainment and things like that. So Yeah, I can act like I didn't know people were going to come at me. They come at everybody. Like, they're <laughs> miserable with their own lives. Now, do you have any regrets? Not really. No? Not really. No. I didn't know. About the show or? Just in general, about being on the show and maybe uh, how it impacted your life or um, just anything that you perhaps may have not Some of my to wigs. revealed. <laughs> no, I regret some of them wigs. <laughs> I could have done a whole lot better. I look twisted. No, some of those wigs, I'm like, what was I thinking? And then certain lights would shine on the fibers and they look super shiny. Oh, no. Why didn't anybody?
anybody tell me? No, you look fabulous Thank now. You. Thank you. Look you. Gorgeous. Thank you. I toned it down. <laughs> yes, I toned it down. Yeah. Those wigs. That's my one regret that's in life. Regret. It's gonna be on my tombstone. Those wigs. <laughs> Them wigs. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Not only is she beautiful, but she is hilarious. You, know, you definitely have a sense of humor that I think that uh, most people um, on Love & Hip Hop didn't get a chance to see because you nah, are incredibly funny. That would have to be my real answer, though. That people didn't get to see this side of me. It was all the, oh, Ching, I love oh. you, Ching. <laughs> uh, leave your wife, Ching. <laughs> no, they, they didn't get to see the funny side. Um, and there was plenty of it on the footage. It just naturally pours out of me. That's just who I am. But that gets to come out on Comeback Kings, UPN 9, my 9, Saturday nights. Yeah, Saturday that's going to be great. All right, so there you have it. And um, we would like to thank our guest, Miss Chrissy Monroe, for stopping by with us here at What's the 411. And um, you know, thank you for having me. Yeah. Thanks for the great wine. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> and thank you for being a part of our show. Yes. What's the 411 Entertainment News? Lifestyle.